Hey everyone, Gorm here. Today I'm going to be doing Baron and Luthien. This is a really important story to Tolkien. Sauron's brought up here, Aragorn brings it up later, and Tolkien considered it to be the kernel of the Middle-earth mythology, which means without this story there wouldn't be Middle-earth as we know it. Actually, it was written in endearment to Tolkien's wife Edith, and on their shared tombstone, under their names it says Baron and Luthien, which I think is really, really cool. So, with that said, today I'm going to be doing part one of Baron and Luthien, and then I'm going to be cutting it off and saving part two for next time. And I'm also going to be doing a book review of the Baron and Luthien released by the Tolkien Estate, which is a history of iterations of the story. So, if that sounds good, make sure to hit the subscribe button to stay tuned for that. Anyways, let's get right into this. During the first age after men entered Beleriand, the land to the west of Middle-earth, that was under the sea in the second age and the third age, Barahir, the leader of the House of Beor, and his men defended the highlands of Dorthonion against the forces of the Dark Lord Morgoth. Morgoth could not find Barahir and sent his lieutenant Sauron to destroy them. Gorlim was one of the twelve men remaining after all the others had been slain. Gorlim had not discovered the fate of his wife, Ilanel, whom he thought had perished in the war. Sauron's servants saw him visiting his forsaken home. There he saw Ilanel in the autumn. As he began to move towards her, he was snatched by wolves and taken by Sauron's hunters. Gorlim was then tortured relentlessly, but did not betray his kinsmen. Sauron himself then came before him and said, I hear now that thou wouldst barter with me. What is thy price? Gorlim wished to see Ilanel again, and to be set free. Then Sauron smiled, saying, That is a small price for so great a treachery. So shall it surely be. Say on. Gorlim revealed all that he knew to Sauron of Barahir's location. Then Sauron laughed, and he mocked Gorlim, and revealed to him that he had seen only a phantom, devised by himself. Nonetheless, I will grant thee thy prayer, and thou shalt go to Ilanel and be set free of my service." And then Sauron put Gorlim cruelly to death. The orcs then slaughtered all of the men of Dorthonion, save one. Beren, the son of Barahir, was away when the camp was taken. Beren saw a wraith of Gorlim beg him to return to his father. Beren then found his father dead as he returned, and took the ring of Barahir from his hand. The Ring of Barahir was an heirloom given to Baron's father for defending the elven king Finrod Felagund and saving his life. It is a symbol of friendship and alliance between elves and men, the firstborn and the followers. Aragorn would have this same exact ring on his finger at the time of the Third Age, and it was an heirloom of the House of Arnor and the Sons of Elendil. Baron wandered into Doriath and was able to pierce through the Girdle of Melian, the protection surrounding the realm. Baron passed through this as his doom was before him. At midsummer, Baron came upon Luthien, the daughter of King Thingol, who was the ruler of the Sindarin Elves, and Queen Melian the Maya, who was from Valinor. Baron was stricken with enchantment for Luthien, and stood still in her gaze for one year. Baron was then brought before the court of Thingol after being seen by Dairon the minstrel, who also had feelings for Luthien. Who are you, said the king, that come hither as a thief and unbidden dare to approach my throne? Luthien declared him as the son of Barahir, a man known for his great friendship with elves. What would you here, unhappy mortal? And, and for, for what, what cause have you left your own land to enter this, which is forbidden to such as you? Can you show reason why my power should not be laid on you in heavy punishment for your insolence and folly? Beren then spoke, regaining his confidence. My fate, O king, led me hither, through perils such as few even of the elves would dare. And here I have found what I sought not indeed, but finding I would possess forever. Neither rock, nor steel, nor the fires of Morgoth, nor all the powers of the elf kingdoms shall keep me from the treasure that I desire. For Luthien, your daughter, is the fairest of all the children of the world. Thingol was about to slay the son of Barahir for this insult, and the court went silent. But Thingol had sworn an oath to Luthien not to harm Beren before he entered for judgment. Melian leant to Thingol's side and said to him, For not by you shall Beren be slain, and far and free does his fate lead him in the end, yet it is wound with yours. Take heed. I too desire a treasure that is withheld. 
Go your way, therefore, bring to me in your hand a Silmaril from Morgoth's crown, and then, if she will, Luthien may set her hand in yours. Then you shall have my jewel, and though the fate of Arda lie within the Silmarils, yet you shall hold me generous. Thingol had bound himself in the doom of Mandos, the curse upon the Noldor, for their kinslaying, and for their pursual of the Silmarils against the will of the Valar. This could not be undone, and it set Doriath in a trap that would mean its destruction. Baron laughed. For little price do elven kings sell their daughters. If this be your will, Thingol, I will perform it. Baron journeyed to the realm of Nargothrond, where ruled Finrod Felagun, the giver of the Ring of Barahir. Baron spoke long with the king of his father's death and of the quest for the Silmaril. Finrod spoke of the wrath that would be gained from the sons of Feanor, should he succeed or fail, and that Felagund would be bound within his fate also. Felagund told the people of Nargothrond that he would depart with Beren. Kelegorm and Kurufin, who were two sons of Feanor, heard of this as they were dwelling in Nargothrond at the time. They reported this to Mithros, the firstborn son of Feanor, and the rest of their brothers. Felagund laid down the crown of Nargothrond, and gave stewardship to Orodreth, his brother, who had recently returned from Tolsirion. Beren and Felagund went along the river Narog, and came upon Tolsirion disguised as orcs, as Sauron ruled there now, and it was called tar in garhoth the Isle of Werewolves. Sauron was aware of them, and caught them. He battled Felagund with songs of power, and Sauron had the mastery. Sauron set them in a pit, where werewolves would snatch them one by one. As Kelegorm and Karufin were hunting, the Hound of Kelegorm, named Huan, went to Doriath. At this time, Fingal discovered that Luthien wished to aid Beren, and he took measures to prevent her from helping him. Huan helped Luthien escape. Huan led her on his back, and they escaped and ran off to aid Beren. In Sauron's pits, Beren and Felagund remained. Felagund burst his bonds and saved Beren from death, yet he was wounded mortally. Felagund said, I go now to my long rest in the timeless halls, beyond the seas and the mountains of Amman. It will be long ere I am seen among the Noldor again, and it may be that we shall not meet a second time, in death or life, for the fates of our kindreds are apart. Farewell. And there he died, and Beren mourned. Luthien reached the isle, and contested with Sauron in song. Sauron knew it was the daughter of Melian, and wished to make her a captive for great reward from Morgoth. Sauron sent wolves to defeat Huan, as Huan could only be slain by the greatest of all of the wolves, as was his doom. But none could defeat the Hound of the Valar, not even Draugluin, the mightiest of them. Sauron decided to take an act of self-fulfilling prophecy, as he thought, and he took the form of a werewolf, and came forth to win the bridge from Huan. Sauron sprang upon Luthien, until she cast a spell of wariness upon him. Huan and Wolf Sauron battled there. Sauron lost, and he shifted shape from wolf to serpent and from monster to his own accustomed form. Luthien cursed him to be sent back to Morgoth and tortured endlessly for his failure. Sauron then yielded the Isle of Tolsirion to Luthien, and it was under darkness no more. Immediately he took the form of a vampire, great as a dark cloud across the moon, and he fled, dripping blood from his throat upon the trees and came to tar Nufuin and dwelt there, filling it with horror. Beren and Luthien, who were now reunited, laid the body of Felagund upon the hill of the isle that was once his. It is said that Finrod walks with Finarfin, his father, beneath the trees in Eldamar. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I absolutely love the story of Beren and Luthien and its different, uh, you know, aspects. One of the things I really like the most is the Songs of Power. Um, it's like a lot of people think it's like a rap battle, but I definitely don't think that's what Tolkien intended. Um, it's more like a uh, minstrel, you know, a minstrel putting lines at each other. And it's some magical aspect. And I think it's a reference to how the music of the Ainur, which created the world, was in fact music and not words. And so music has a power in Middle-earth in, in the form of people who can actually wield it. 
And another thing I actually like is how Sauron, like, it has lines, <laughs> you know, because in Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, you don't really get any words from Sauron. So you get to see a little bit into his character and why he wants to do things for Morgoth and is afraid of him, which actually kind of, like, shows how he was so, you know, against him after Morgoth was gone and defeated. And Sauron, like, made the Ring of Power and he wanted to become a Dark Lord in his own way. And it's really cool getting to see Sauron portrayed. I also really like how Luthien is like, you know, the powerful figure in within uh, Baron and Luthien together. And that Baron is very brave and noble. And uh, he does what he needs. He does what uh, has to be done. But Luthien is the one who saves him, <laughs> which I think is great. Um, so, yeah. But that said, um, I will release part two soon. And I will also release a... Um, a book review on the Baron and Luthien book, which is by the Tolkien estate and was edited by Christopher Tolkien, the son of Tolkien, that kind of like compiles all of the uh, stories together and the different iterations of the Baron and Luthien story. And I'm going to read that um, soon. I'm going to reread it and then I'm going to get back to you on that. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Lord of the Rings lore videos and also Lord of the Rings online videos that I will be doing. I've recorded a bunch of those, so I'm going to schedule them to upload. Um, so if you have any suggestions for that series or suggestions for lore videos, please make sure to put them in the lore video comments and not the Lotro ones, since I have recorded way more Lord of the Rings online videos in advance. And if you want to join my kinship, the link to my Discord on my YouTube channel also works, so you can join my kinship in Lord of the Rings online. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.